I want you to remember, don't draw this, but I want you to recall that we did something similar to this before. I'll just do it small over here, right? When we were comparing linear graphs. You remember linear graphs? The straight line ones, right? So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. y equals x. Yeah. Okay. And do you remember I said, what happens if you slap a number in front of there? Right? Like say y equals 5x. Do you remember we did this graph? We had a whole bunch of different ones. We had 5x, 10x, minus 3x, all kinds of different ones. These two, the difference is that it will be steeper. Okay? When you slap a number out the front, it's like this one, but it's five times steeper. It's like a hill that's five times harder to climb. Okay? That's that's the difference between these two. So, um, where would the five be? Like on the grid, would it be five? I mean, like. Yeah, okay. So the way that I would say it is if I've got a point like here, one, one, because I happen to know that that graph passes through that point, then there would be a point five times higher up here. Five, one, five. five. No, no. The x will be the same. Yeah, and the, the, the yeah. x would first. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you can see it's five times bigger. If I went over, it'd be up at 10 and then 15 and then oh, so 20. Oh, so y would be five and then x would be like normal. Unless yeah, that's right. So if I put in the same x value to this and this, then the y's will be different. The y's will be five times bigger. Yeah. That was a quick question. Uh, when it said 3a and 3b, is that 5x or five times? 5x squared. Okay. It's in your book. It's in your book then. Okay, now. Therefore, I'm going to use this as my comparison, right? Mm. If you take this and you slap a 5 out the front, it gets, it gets um, steeper, okay? Well, if you take this and you slap a 5 out the front, That's what would you expect would happen? Steeper. It'll be that shape, but steeper. Now, we'll do, we'll do this side first, okay? So you're like, all right, it's, um, it's increasing faster, like that, right? Well... On this side, you'll get exactly the same thing, but it's, it's symmetrical, remember? We had a look at the palindrome thing before, okay? Yes. So this is y equals 5x squared. It's still gonna have the same shape, but steeper, like so. Okay, same shape, narrower if you like, same idea. Okay, now, now maybe you can see why I'm gonna put this one on the same graph, right? 5x squared, it's steeper. A third x squared. It's gonna be it's gonna be fatter, isn't it? Right? Just like if I put a third x on here, it'll be shallower. Right? So so yeah, it's gained a bit of weight. Okay. So if I um if I draw out like this, okay, that's what a third x squared will look like. Okay? Pretty much on a smaller scale. Yeah, kinda. Kinda. But the proportions are different. The proportions are different. It's the same shape, but it's been squashed down. It'll be a third the height everywhere. Okay. Does anyone want me to pause, explain any other ideas on this? Yeah. Can you just go through 3A again? Yep, sure. Okay. I'll do it from another point of view, okay? Draw up a little table of values with me. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this one because because I'm gonna need this space. Okay, we're gonna do a bit of a um a beefed up table of values. I want you to follow along with me. Okay, we used to have just um just two rows. Okay, this time we're gonna have a few more. Um, we'll do four rows. Okay, four rows, and you'll need six columns. Like so. Okay, hopefully if I show you a different way, it'll help you understand it a bit differently. Please, thank you. Okay, you always got to have another way up your pocket. All right, here's what we're going to do. We've done tables of values before, right? Yes. Wait, is that times or x? Let me explain. So you've got your x row along the top. Here are, here are my values for x. I'm just going to try out a few values. 
Now I want to compare these three graphs, this time I'm going to compare the numbers, right? I try to avoid doing this because it's slow, it takes a long time, but once you see the numbers, and we can just crunch it out with a calculator, it's hard to argue with. Whereas this is kind of a bit intuitive and if you don't get it, it's like, well, why don't I get it? I don't know. So let's try this out. First, I'm going to do the middle row. This is y equals x squared. We did this before. You've drawn these values out already, right? And you can do it with me right now. Minus 2 times minus 2. That's y equals x squared. Four. That's 4. Negative 1 times negative 1. That's the negatives cancel. You just get 1. 0 times 0. 0. And then 1. And then 4. Okay, remember this? Familiar? Okay, all right. Now let's go up to this row, okay? This is like y equals x squared, but I'm multiplying by 5. Every number here I'm going to multiply by 5. Okay, so 4 times 5? 20. 1 times 5? 5. 5. 0 times 5? 5. 5. 5. 0. 0. <laughs> Zero. Five. Right? Five. Then 5 and then 20. Same oh, symmetry, wait. right? Wait. <laughs> yeah, 2 times 5. Oh, multiply by 5, right? All of these values, to get up here, I multiply by 5. It's or you can think about it like this, 5 times x squared, if x is 2, it's 5 times 2 squared, what's 2 squared? 4. It's 4, 5 times 4, it's 20. Okay. So notice, they, they all pass through 0, right? They both pass through 0, but these guys are higher, they're much higher, they're 5 times higher. Okay. Alright, now down here, okay? from x squared, I'm going to... Divide everything by 3, right? So 4 divided by 3, that's 4 thirds. What's 4 thirds as a mixed numerum? One. One. It'll be 1 and a third. 1 and a third. 1 divided by 3 equals a third. 0 divided by 3? 0. And then it's symmetrical. Okay. So this was the shape we began with, right, in the middle here. And then we compare, 5x squared is the same shape, same symmetry, just everything's higher, right? And then this one is the same shape, just everything's lower, okay? If you like, it's like, it's like, it's the same shape, but something's holding onto it, and it's dragging it down. Okay, so this, these are all the values that correspond to this graph, or these graphs. We're going to draw a graph on here in a second. Can you predict... What's the first thing I'm going to draw on? Y equals x squared. Good. Okay, I'm predictable, right? So, you might have noticed, by the way, this is the way I do it. When I do it freehand, when I don't have that template stencil type thing, rather than come down, I usually, more frequently, I'll start from the middle and go up, and then start from the middle again and go the other way. I tend to get better symmetry. It's not perfect, but... Like when I do it the other way and I come down, I often like I miss, yeah. and then I'm like, oh great, oh, okay. <laughs> you know. At least this way. Remember I said the turning point, the vertex, it's the most important point. That's the one you got to get right. Okay. So that's that's how I do it. Okay. So what we're going to compare it with this time is this. Okay. Hmm. The only difference is. I've put a minus sign on the front. So it's minus, minus x squared. That's sketchy, sir. That's tricky. Okay, so I want you to guess for yourself. I, you don't have to share it, but what do you think it would look like? Okay. And, then, and then my next question is, well, how would you then work out whether you were right, whether your guess was right or wrong? What do you reckon, Darcy? Is this question four? Uh, five, I think. But I'm making up a question, which is like question five. Okay. It's going to be like the... I think it's going to be like the minus 7. Okay, like as it moved down? Yeah. Okay. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. Okay. You don't have to follow along with this, but um, I'm going to draw up a table of values just so you can see it and we can do it together. Okay, so I'm going to do it down here. Oops. Okay, y, or x, sorry, and y. I'll chuck in some values. I always chuck in these same ones because they give me a good idea of what's happening. Let's do it one at a time, okay? Uh, let's start in the middle because they're easy. Zero. Zero. What happens when you put x equals zero into this? Y equals minus zero squared. Minus zero. That's zero. Good. It is minus zero. There's a minus there. You can't just forget about it, right? Okay, let's try the next one. When x equals one. When x equals one, y equals minus one squared. Now be careful. 
It's um this, this, right? That's what we got now, is different to this. Oh, it's gonna go right? the way uh, Okay, so the difference between these two is the difference between these two is here you've got a minus sign and it gets squared. Here you square first and then you slap a minus sign on the front. So it's a bit different for order of operations. So be careful. So now let's try it again. This is not what we've got. Let's, let's get rid of that so it's not confusing. When x is equal to 1, y equals minus 1 squared, which would be minus 1. Okay, x equals 2. It's going to be minus 4. Can you see why? I'll, I'll do the numbers for you, right? Let's, let's, take, let's take 2. Y equals minus, and everywhere I see an X, I'll put a 2. Okay. Now, there's no brackets here. I'm not squaring the negative sign. The negative sign comes in later. It's minus 2 squared, right? 2 times 2, which is minus 4. Oh, 1 times. Okay. So that's why, as Nathan said, it's minus 4 over here. Now, all our parabolas so far, they've all been symmetrical. So if these are the values you've got on the right, what do you expect to happen on the left? Exactly. It's the same, but, but in reverse order, right? So you get, you get negative one and negative four. So have a look at these numbers. They're all, with the exception of this one, they're all negative. Where are the negative y values? Y values are up down, right? So negative y values are, they're all down the bottom. This is the shape you get. You get this shape upside down. Yeah, kind of, kind of like an hourglass. Okay, so this minus sign here, it flips the whole shape upside down. Okay, that's what you get.